Hi there, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. Uh, again, meeting you from the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey. I'm Daniel, and today we thought we'd tell you a little bit about bird brains. Specifically, we're going to talk about uh, the structure of birds' brains, how intelligent a lot of birds are, some diseases that we encounter here at the center when we're taking care of some of our birds, help to understand intelligence. Scientists will judge that by the amount of neural connections that animals will have based on neurons. And neurons are going to be cells that are in the brain or throughout the body as well, but more densely packed and more specialized in animal brains that allow for electrical impulses to travel from one area to the next. The more neurons an animal has, it's suggested that they have a higher intelligence and a higher thinking level. For the longest time, people went with the assumption that birds were less intelligent than humans and primates on the fact that they have a smooth brain, whereas our brains are much more wrinkled, have it let us have more surface area to allow neurons to be packed more densely in there. Thanks to more recent research and studies done in 2016 and 2018, we've actually been able to find out that birds have more tightly packed together neurons at a higher density than what you would find in primates and in humans. There's been a lot of studies done on the intelligence of birds. A lot of them have been done with parrots, specifically African greys, along with corvids, such as crows and ravens. There was one very famous study of an African grey parrot whose name was Alex that was able to understand about a hundred English words, understands concepts like sizes, shapes, colors, and even the concept of zero. An example of Alex the African Grey Parrot's intelligence, watch the following clip to showcase how he's able to identify these objects. Look, what color bigger? What color bigger? Green. Green, oh you're a good boy. Hey, Alex, look. Well, look what I got for you. Hey, look. Look at all these neat toys. Look. Hey, look, can you tell me? On the tray, how many green block? Green block. Good parrot. Two green block. Two good parrot. When it comes to crows, researchers over in Washington State a couple of years back, we were able to test to see if crows can recognize faces and remember those faces. And they did it in a study where researchers showed up wearing face masks with taxidermied crows. The native crows realized them as a potential threat and went to harass these researchers. A few years later, the researchers showed back up just wearing the face mask and the crows remembered and harassed them again. There have been studies for Japanese and American ravens that have been able to utilize uh, heavy traffic areas and the crosswalks for those roads to drop hard food like walnuts and other nuts and wait for the light to turn red and use the crosswalk to scoop the food off the ground so they do not get hit by the cars but allow the cars to crush their food making it easier for them to eat. Another study with corvids was done at the University of Auckland. You can see in the tube to the left that there is water and a treat but the water level is too low for the crow to reach the snack. Watch as he uses the rocks to displace the water, raising the level and the tree closer to the surface. The tube to the right had the food in it as well, but it was filled with sand. The crow was smart enough to know that the sand wouldn't be displaced like the water would. When we think of intelligence for humans, we think of how much math they can do, how much they can remember historical-wise, being able to put facts back out. But judging an animal on human levels is not uh, a good study to show intelligence. So these studies have been focused on the survival basis for these animals. Just like how humans are susceptible to a lot of brain-based diseases, so too are birds. Arboviruses like West Nile and Eastern equine encephalitis that causes inflammation in the brain. 
because the arboviruses like West Nile and Eastern Equine are passed via mosquitoes, we'll actually team up with mosquito control and send them blood samples from some birds that have passed away to see if they are being affected by the mosquitoes. Another one, avian vacular myelin, my, vacular myelopathy, myelinopathy. <laughs> the other one is shorthanded to AVM. And since I cannot pronounce the final word, it is here on the screen. How it's caused is by a blue-green algae that's native in southeastern United States areas and has been growing on an introduced water plant called hydrilla. When coots and other water birds eat this hydrilla that's been in, uh, affected by the blue-green algae, they will become lethargic, losing the ability of flight being able to forage and eventually pass away. When birds of prey like eagles, owls, and hawks eat on these birds, they get this disease and it will eventually kill them as well and there is no cure for this. But as of right now, our staff here at the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey has not been able to identify any AVM in any birds because after 24 hours, any evidence disappears from brain lesion degradation. As to not end on a sour note, I'd like to tell you about a bird that has an um, incredible adaptation to prevent itself from getting concussions, and that is woodpecker. Now what a concussion is, in case you are not aware, it is when you, there is bruising on the brain from internal hemorrhaging. Uh, a lot of times football players are very susceptible to this from the tackling that they do, but with woodpeckers, they are doing sudden stops against wood Scientists have wondered how they prevent themselves from getting these concussions and getting brain damage. And after a lot of studies, we have some pretty good evidence to suggest how they stop themselves from these injuries. Woodpecker skulls are much more spongy than what a regular skull structure would be, allowing the force of the impact to be absorbed throughout the entire skull. The attachment site for a woodpecker's tongue is just like as it is for ours, the hyoid bone. Whereas our hyoid is in our necks, Theirs is on top of their skulls, so their tongue actually wraps around their entire head. Scientists believe that this helps to cushion the impact from the blows as well. For woodpeckers, their brains are actually situated in their skulls differently than what human brains are. Ours are sitting horizontally in our brains, so when we have our heads flung forward, the brain will impact with not a lot of surface area, just a small connection point. Whereas woodpeckers, when their brains are going forward, there's a lot more surface area that allows for the diffusal of that force absorbed. We hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson about bird brains. If you have any questions about brains or any brain diseases that our birds get affected by, feel free to leave a comment down below. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in our next video.